Okay. Okay. The uh, unlawful out. pursuit of my liberty status hearing. That's it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's what you want to watch. Uh, yep. Have a show right now. Okay. Uh, let me get it on screen here, and uh, we'll go with that. Okay. Square up the box here. And I just want to preface it with, I had no idea what to, what I was going to do. I had no idea what to do because I'm not an attorney. And the Lord assured me I did not need to prepare what I would say. And this is ah. what happened. Okay, let's take a listen. Oh, it looks like we got no audio. There we go. I would have to say that do you mind bringing I have back been just a instructed through my faith so that I am what she says. not uh, a defendant in this case at all. As a matter of fact. So let me ask, Mr. Bowermaster, is it your intent to move forward as your own counsel? I would have to say that I have been instructed through my faith that I am not uh, a defendant in this case at all. As a matter of fact, I'm auditing this process as a journalist that I have witnessed many unlawful practices already, including the pursuit of my liberty and uh, dishonest testimony from the current prosecutor on my case. Um, I'm going to have to inform the court today that if there is any further pursuit of my liberty, I will be showing up with the intention to document for the public. And I will be uh, allowing the Lord to represent me because I believe everyone involved knows better in uh, regard to what they've been doing and unethical practices uh, suppressing evidence, and whether this is alleged or not at this point, uh, Judge, I am fully intending on making sure the public knows what happens going forward. We, I have offered the state a peaceful resolution here so that we could do the right thing that, for everyone involved, and they denied it. And I'm very concerned now for the public, so I must insist that if we do, if, if there is any pursuit of my liberty going forward, uh, the Lord is my witness. I will have to do the work that is intended to document and report that. Okay, so you're, you're prepared to act as your own attorney, a journalist, a witness, and a party in one jury trial. I don't understand that. I, I do know that in this case, I'm specially appearing as a journalist auditing this practice that is going on in our public proceedings because we've got a deprivation of rights in multiple regards. And uh, unfortunately, a conviction of two of the people that were related to my case subsequently, who I witnessed uh, Miss Whitney Welsh, as well as Judge Manweiler, uh, Blake Higley, and a few others, Scott Bedke, dishonest testimony. I do have evidence of this. And I, at this point, it would be a civil suit against the state if it was necessary to provide that evidence. Okay, I guess, uh, Mr. McCrill, uh, I, let, let's take this one thing at a time. Sure. M Mr. McCrill, was it your plan to withdraw as counsel of record at this point? Y yes, Your Honor. My, my family and I had to move unexpectedly. We lived in Chalice and we moved to uh, Pocatello and so because I was so far away from my client base up there, I just decided to, uh, you know, change directions. And I accepted a job with the Bannock County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. And so so because I'm a prosecutor now, I can't represent anybody in a defense case anymore. And so I need to request that I'm able to withdraw. Okay. Uh, well, that uh, certainly is good cause uh, to withdraw. And uh, it also sounds like Mr. Bowermaster at this point wants to uh, represent himself uh, with consultation to his uh, uh, faith. Uh, and I, I guess I would ask this, Ms. Welsh, do you have any objection to Mr. McCrill withdrawing his counsel of record at this point? I don't know how he could proceed anyway, but do you have an objection? No, Your Honor. My only concern would be Mr. Bowermaster's right to a speedy trial and making sure that either that is waived or documented that this is not um, held against the state. Uh, well, yeah, I think he's already asked for at least two setovers already. Um, so 
uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Bowermaster, let me ask this. Um, are, are you prepared to proceed to trial on July 19th? Well, as far as I'm concerned, as I mentioned, um, I'd have to object to what Whitney Welsh said because there is no trial that would be lawful in regards to uh, Brian Keith Bowermaster. Uh, I am specially appearing currently as a living person who rep who witnessed unlawful practices in our state capitol building and then the pursuit of that liberty uh, unlawfully by the current prosecutor as well as other related cases. So I am auditing this process currently as a investigative journalist as well as uh, a concerned member of the people. And this must stop. I am actually requesting now that this case be dismissed uh, as there is no jurisdiction on what is on the record as well as the um, inaccurate interpretation of the statute because it does not pertain to the constitutionality that is to be interpreted for the benefit of me, the, the citizen, or the I should say the people that was exercising a right that day in a public space to do this very thing, to protect the people. And I do have that right. And if it is infringed by the trial process itself, I find that to be a redundant unlawful action. Okay, well, I'm not gonna entertain an oral motion to dismiss at this point in time. Uh, because uh, none of us had notice of it. Uh, so uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. If you want to file a motion, then you would file a motion and we'd give the state an opportunity to respond to that motion. And then I can uh, hold a hearing on it and I can make a determination. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out, Mr. Bowermaster, is uh, we have a charge against, uh, let me ask a question here, Ms. Wells, in terms of this charge, does it, does it have anything to do with the Capitol? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Bowermaster um, was cited at the Capitol okay. for his conduct. Okay. All right. Uh, was it the same day or a different day as uh, the case that was just tried in front of Judge Neumeiler? The same day. It was a matter of hours prior to the events leading to the Judge Manweiler trialer, trial. Okay. Which, by the way, it should be noticed that I was not, I did not know anyone there. And the only relationship okay. that was built oh. between those oh. cases is due to okay. what I witnessed. Okay, I'm sorry, but Mr. Bowermaster, I'm trying to hold off because sure. this is exactly um, one of the issues uh, here is that um, it is exceptionally difficult for an individual to proceed pro se, especially, and what I mean is to represent yourself, especially if you are also planning on being a journalist uh, at the same time. It's just incredibly difficult to wear that many number of hats, to be your own attorney, to also be a potential witness, uh, and also uh, to be a party. And uh, if you sit alone at council table, I understand that your faith says that you'll have the guidance uh, of another, but you won't have somebody sitting at council table able to walk you through the process. Somebody who's been schooled in the Idaho rules of evidence, the Idaho rules of uh, uh, the Idaho criminal rules, the Idaho misdemeanor criminal rules, all of that. Uh, you, you, uh, and, and so I have concerns about you representing yourself, but you're telling me, uh, that that's how you want to proceed. And Mr. McCrill is certainly not in a position now that he's taken a position with the, uh, Bannock County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. He can't also be your attorney in this case. So first things first, um, Mr. McCrill, if you file a motion to withdraw, I will grant, uh, your, uh, I will grant you leave to withdraw as counsel of record. Okay, so that's first things first. Okay. Um, the second thing is, if Mr. Bowermaster wanted to proceed with trial on July 19th, I guess I would ask Ms. Welsh, is the state in a position to do so? No, Your Honor. Um, Chairman Greg Cheney is unavailable that day and he is a necessary witness. Okay. 
And I relied on the Mr. Mackerel's stipulation to continuing the jury trial um, that he signed when he was still representing him. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, I understand that might have been a, a, a stipulation. There's been an earlier request from the defense to continue the trial date. Um, in this case, what I'd like to do is set this over so I can uh, engage in what we call the Feretta inquiry to make sure that if Mr. Bowermaster wants to represent himself that uh, I'm satisfied that I've given him the information he needs uh, so that his decision to proceed without an attorney is one he's making knowingly and voluntarily and that he understands the implications of that because Mr. Bowermaster, as I've said now, this will be the third time, it is an exceptionally difficult thing for you to do. Also, I do have concerns that, um, you know, there are rules regarding what you can and what you can't document at trial, including the faces of jurors. Uh, and so I'm going to need to enter a case management order in this case. But if you're, uh, and, and again, you have been incredibly polite and uh, there's been no disruption in the proceedings to date. Uh, but if you were to become disruptive at trial, and if you can't follow the court's orders regarding recording and that kind of thing at trial, and you were to be excused, we really need to have backup counsel there to represent you. That could become a real problem. So I first things first, I want to set this over just so that we can have a little more time so I understand exactly how you want to proceed. And if you're waiving your right to counsel, that um, you do so knowingly. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's fair to the other 10 people, actually more than that, on the line today to engage in that type of inquiry. So what I'd be inclined to do is set this out uh, for a uh, status conference uh, sooner rather than later, just to check in and make sure, like I said, that Mr. Bowermaster, if you do decide to represent yourself, that um, that decision that I'm confident that I've done my part to give you the information you need to make that decision. So, Ms. Welsh, are you still there? You kind of disappeared on me. I am, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Um, and do you have uh, any objection to me? Miranda, do you mind uh, pausing at for At this a point, it'll be a status conference to set a trial date. And based on that trial setting, I'll go ahead and work backward with the uh, uh, some uh, deadlines and a court management, a, a case management order that would apply in this case. No, I have no objection. That would be great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And that way, too, we can uh, make sure that um, we have some deadlines for uh, motion hearings and that kind of thing, Mr. Bowermaster, if that's what you want to do. Um, so... Thumper, do you mind pausing uh, just for a quick sec? I hate to put you on the spot like this, but... Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'm sure you've probably got a few things to say already, but um, I just wanted to make a note right now that what Whitney Welsh must have been doing when she was off the screen, she's the prosecutor, by the way, mm -hmm. what she's about to say next, I believe she was going to look at, um, which is some of the other comments that I have about this, the updates on Ammon and Aaron's case as to how they've been trying to keep me away from it. Um, she brings to the judge's attention something very important here, and, and you'll see that happen here. And then that's the last thing we need to see from this. Okay. All right. We'll start it up again here. Uh, I am not seeing any time in the next two weeks. And I feel I must say that just for accuracy, I, I have not uh, consented to representing myself at all. Um, it is the Lord that has called me to do this as an audit process, just so it's clear. Okay. Um, and so this is actually exactly why I have concerns, Mr. Bowermaster. Because, I'm sure. Okay, but let me just explain. So Mr. McCrill, Ms. Welsh, and I, we all went to law school. And so when we come into to this court process, we're playing from kind of a similar playbook. Uh, we understand the rules of evidence, the uh, criminal rules, uh, and, um, Do you believe in God, and, so, judge? and so, and, and so we're going to be speaking one language and we're going to be playing, say, uh, from the rules of baseball. 
And then if you're coming in, uh, and I understand I, I, um, I'm, it, that your faith is moving you. And we all I take an oath, don't we? And I, okay, and I respect that. And that's what um, this is about. But my point is that if you don't have an attorney with you, you may be coming to the courthouse playing a different game, right? That you're following the rules of, we're playing according to the rules of baseball, and then you're going to come in with soccer rules. And we're not going to be able to communicate. So some of the defenses that you might be able to raise more effectively through counsel, well, we won't be able to hear them because I, I might, I, we just might be using different language for the same things. And I, I, um, I have significant concerns about you proceeding in this way for you and your rights. But I am going to honor that you have the right to do this in this way. But in order to allow that to happen, I have to make sure that what you're doing is knowing. And as I said before, I don't have time to do that with 10 people on the line. Sure. I'd like to engage in that inquiry when we have more time. So I'm trying to find time on my schedule to do that. Okay. And here the she soonest goes. I see on the calendar is the 6th at 2. Okay. That's Friday, August 6th at 2 o'clock. Oh, madam, okay, it's just a half hour, but we'll take it. All right, and then we'll set this for a uh, jury trial at that time, and I'll get a case management order out, uh, and then I can just engage a little further with you, Mr. Bowermaster, to make sure, again, that if you're waiving the right to have an attorney present, that you're doing so with uh, in a knowing fashion. So thank you. Um, and Ms. Welsh, it looks like you want to say something. Um, that dates works for the state, Your Honor. Given Mr. Bowermaster's statements about auditing this process, um, and I also believe that right now he is actively broadcasting this court proceeding on Facebook, um, just in case the court was not aware of that. I don't We're know if you're recording it as well. Or not. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, that will definitely be addressed uh, in a. Uh, and that's good right there. In order to make sure that everybody understands. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, there, there is a, uh, a, have you ever heard such word salad in all your life? Good gravy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 uh, if you don't mind, if, if Brent would uh, be interested in uh, commenting on this. Uh, oh, uh, please. Uh, it would be uh, uh, Brent. If you'd like, please. Uh, well, yes, I, I, of course, I'm sitting here shaking my head. And it's not like I'm surprised at any of this. I'm just tired of it. But I wanted to hear it in the worst way. I'm so glad you, you put it on. I noticed that whatever the government does is half done. Yeah. Whatever the government does is half done. I noticed that I could hear our man clear as crystal. His equipment worked good. Couldn't sound like the judge was a mule chewing on marbles. Couldn't understand the things she said. Well, that's the government. They're, 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 you can't hear the judge. You can't have, hold a court hearing. He tried to give it to the public in this day of no public hearings with this COVID pandemic. They've shut down the courts. So he tried to, your name is, I see Bowermaster is your name. Uh, Brian, your name? Brian. Good. I thought I caught that. Brian. Brian tried to make it a public hearing, which our Constitution demands, and that little snip said, well, I want to make sure the judge knows that he's, he's got this on Facebook. Why? Because she's a little tattletale. She's a little Sydney. She's a little girl going to tattle on the other girl. The girl that's up on the bench is going to listen, and they're going to have their little girl discussion, and they're going to make decisions based upon their undiscerning presumptions that they've decided are true, whether or not, and on and on the madness goes. The dynamic has changed. The madness continues. Oh, by the way, Brian, I noticed right off the bat, you did an excellent job of representing yourself. I don't, they'll not tell you that. I've watched a lot of, I've, I've tried to represent myself, Brian. I've tried to represent myself in criminal court. I did it for two or three years before the trial. Then I got a lawyer, long story, but it was difficult. It was difficult because, well, 
it's a matter of perception. Of course, I wasn't in front of the jury. I was in front of the judge. But there is that never-ending pressure of intimidation, of power. Now, I didn't catch it, Brian. i got to ask you a question. And I'm sitting here listening. I understood this court was held in the state of Idaho. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Was it federal court? Uh, this is just county, to my understanding, yeah. Oh, okay. And then I heard the word Nevada, and I said, there's no Nevada County in Idaho that I know of. So it's something, I'm not keeping up with the news. I'm interested in the case now. But this was, uh, this case is about something that happened in Nevada, but the court is being held in state court in Idaho. Buff me up on the, as a lawyer would say, the posture of the case. I'd like to ask a couple other questions, if I may, now that Thumper's been kind enough to, to, uh, let me say something, and I'm, I want more foundation. So the case is in state court in Idaho, in Boise. Now, I did hear that, come to think of it. Uh -huh. Boise, so that's down in southern Idaho. And it's about something that happened in Nevada. Is that it? Uh, no. No. Uh, and, and forgive me if there was any uh, lack of clarity there. So it actually involved last year during August during a special session at the Idaho State Capitol building. Um, I had witnessed the people insisting that they be allowed in the house gallery when they were trying to use all this nonsensical regulatory narrative to keep us out saying that we could only have 25 people in our own house gallery um, which by the way they they might not have anticipated a health, a mental health professional being there and somebody who studied the human potential i don't care what anybody says physical bodies makes a difference when they're present and on a metaphysical level, on a physical level. So we all, of course, stood and said, no, this is our house, let us in. Well, the glass door got broken on the outside of the gallery. And it was because of the officers insisting and, and impeding the people. They tried to lie in the media that the people were rioters and violent people and protesters and, it, and the door got broken and said, used all the divisive terms, of course, crazy, rioting, unmasked, blah, blah, blah just atrocious so i we get in and my footage actually was from the right angle thank you lord to disprove those lies so then the next day they start hounding me about uh having the right to film from where i want to film uh, and i was sitting at a media table that they no longer wanted me to sit at which i was at the entire day previous and so i insisted that i have that right and they can't abridge it i asked for education the chairman ignored me and so then I address, went back to the table and addressed him publicly in front of the people and said, I asked you for education. You denied me. What makes you think you have that right? And then they arrested me with 10 cops. And what did it charge you with? Trespassing. Okay. So you had a, you were a part of the media, of course, right? Yes, I, I own a production company. And then as soon as I saw what happened and that our local media couldn't be trusted, I took it upon myself and my faith that it was my duty to stay there. And I was told through my faith that I had to be there the next day to make sure this was documented accurately. See, then the judge maligns you for exercising a fundamental, that means God-given, straight from God, no yes. intermediate, God-given right to represent yourself in court under the protection of the Constitution of the United States. Judges do this persistently. Why don't they grow up, quit being children, quit doing what all their lo other lawyers do who are wrong and say, well, I, I'm glad you're here and I'm going to work with you. Oh, it's making it terribly difficult for me that you don't have a lawyer. That's all she was saying. And then it was going to be a hard day for her. Good grief, lady. You're getting $175,000 a year to do what you're doing. This man is in danger of losing life, liberty, property, or combination thereof. You must conform to what he needs to do to defend himself and not the other way around. You're not there to kiss her can. She's there to make sure you get a fair trial yes. or a fair shake or a fair hearing. That's the opposite of what ought to be done. But I'm not so naive as to know it doesn't consistently happen the way it just happened here. And then I noticed also, I noticed also that that lawyer, who was that long haired gal? Was she the prosecutor or something? I assume that's what she was. Yes, Whitney Wells. Is that what she, okay. Yeah, so the judge, instead of asking you, well, what happened? Tell us what happened. You're representing yourself. 
asked, asked this gal, well, what's the fact of the case? I was waiting for you to say, objection, Your Honor. If she's going to testify, I suggest that she be sworn. Otherwise, yeah. it's meaningless in this hearing. But, but that was not the thing to say at that time. The reason why? Because as the Bible says, and you relied upon this statement from the Bible that says when you're drugged before men and you're put in danger of losing your life, liberty, or property, do not think beforehand what you're going to say, but instead trust that God will put the words in your mouth at the right time. And that's why I said a while ago, you were well-spoken and I thought you did a great job. And, and just because I think, oh, I wish I'd have heard that or I wish that doesn't mean that's what was supposed to happen right then. So be encouraged, but don't be big headed about it. You were right. calm. You didn't get upset and you spoke clearly. That's the important thing. Thank you, Jim. And, and believe me, I'd love to take the credit for it, but at the same time, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm no, so no, grateful no, no, for the Lord. <laughs> just, yeah, just take the enjoyment and give him the credit. And well, back I, to you. Uh, Brian. May I just share one thing that's, that's so simple and, and, straightforward just to, to add what, to what you said, Jim, if that's okay, Thumper, um, from the Idaho Constitution here. Um, very simple. Actually, uh, Brian, it's, it's Brent. Is, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Brent, <laughs> Brent, forgive me. Hey, we, we, we're even now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to read Article 1, Section 1, and Section 2. They're so simple, I don't even have to go any further. Section one is inalienable rights of man. All men are by nature free and equal and have certain inalienable rights, among which are enjoying and defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, pursuing happiness, and securing safety, which is what I was doing. And then two, political power inherent in the people. All political power is inherent in the people. The government is instituted for their equal protection and benefit. And they have the right to alter, reform, or abolish the same whenever they deem it necessary. Whenever. That means I don't need your approval for an oral motion. If you fail to listen to what I say and it checks out, she is breaking her oath. And, I, and that's what I'm receiving from this. I, she had the responsibility to see if what I was saying was true, whether she likes it, the form the motion's in or not. And so I just wanted to share that because... It goes further, too, as you know. The Constitution applies to them. We're above the Constitution, and God's above us. I just don't understand why we're even dealing with this. But what do you think, Thumper? <laughs> well, I, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they cover themselves. I mean, she was so full of word salad. She said a lot of things there, and, uh, uh, and, and all of it was to... Yeah, she really doesn't know what to do in this case. She's like Brent was saying, she uh, she's trying to uh, convince you that you're you're some kind of a buffoon. You're 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 yeah. You're going to come in. You're not going to play with our ball and our bat. We don't like that. That's not fair. Yeah, <laughs> I mean for crying out loud. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we not might not be speaking the same language. I'm I'm sorry, English. You don't understand English, the the, the spoken word. Uh, uh, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. If we'd like to uh, sit down and come up with a couple of common terms here, like idiot and uh, unconstitutional, <laughs> and and maybe a few things, maybe we might be able to uh, uh, come come to some uh, uh, agreement on this, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you could clearly see she was befuddled, and you you had her goat, and uh, you know, she, uh, and and the 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 prosecutor here, I mean, she kept blinking in and out. I wonder what she was doing when she was uh, blinking out. You know, uh, are are they are they you know? Because in Zoom, you know, you can have private little messages between the two. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, little secret uh, meetings. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we do it all the time, but you know. yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> But the government's not uh, supposed to. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to. It's be it's supposed to be a, a a public hearing again, and and they when they when they you know whine about oh he's putting this out there on uh, on social media. Well, excuse me, it is a public hearing for crying out loud. Yeah, and they broadcast you know? it. Yeah, yeah, but it you know uh, they don't want your people seeing it. You know they they might get something up to think that you're actually doing something right and. Uh, you know, you're right. And I like the fact that you call it an audit. 
I, I like that because it, it says, uh, you know, <laughs> you know the, the good old, I got my eyes on you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, so do a whole bunch of other people. I, I got something crazy to share. If we got a little more, if, if we can share another yeah. thing. So this is uh, where... Yeah, if, if we can, uh, I think Brent might have a comment here. Oh, sure, He's sure. Un, no, I'm not trying to cut anyone off. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I just, I, I'd like to hear what Brent has to say. Sure. Boy, on my mind, I was overflowing. And I was about to burst, but then I relaxed and the boil simmered back down again. And <laughs> so I'm not about to overflow. And I had a lot of... I don't remember what I was going to say, Thumper. Nice of you to ask me, but I noticed, I guess, I suppose I could say that I noticed that this gal, this prosecutor, this creature, uh, if she was getting off and on and off and on, she was talking to somebody else who was coaching her mm -hmm. because she didn't know what to do. And what Brian did is not normally done, and it's not within the box. And if it's not within the box, the girls don't know what to do. So they're going to have to have a little, a little meeting on the side and discover what to do with people that don't fit into their nice, neat little box and their cute little careers. Our common law is not a cute little box and a, and a career for people who want to look like they've got an, an ordered life. Our common law is about fighting. And because we've lost that fundamental feature of what it is, because we've lost that, we're losing the truth. Our common law is an adversarial tradition. It is Battle by trial. Battle by trial. The rest of the world is inquisition. It's where the government just decides what they're going to do with you. I'm not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. If it didn't make you sick at your stomach to go into an inquisition, a tribunal in France, then there's something wrong with you. Uh, Brent, you don't I stop to consider. Pardon. Go ahead. I, I, I have a question, you know, because now if this were in a, in a courtroom, in a public courtroom, and those two wanted to have uh, notes passed between them, okay? Uh, they can't do that in a, in a normal court. They'd have to approach the bench, a permission to approach the bench, blah, 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 blah. And, that, uh, and, uh, and then both counsels, isn't it, isn't it normal that both counsels will approach the bench and have that sidebar conversation? Well, Thumper, it doesn't take a lawyer. You're not a lawyer, and you understand that fundamental of due process. Both of them yeah. have to be there at the same time. You can't be having ex parte communications between a lawyer and a judge and not include the fellow who's representing himself. Yes, but exactly. But you know that's going on. Yeah. Yes. Was, and, 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 that, that, and that alone, that alone uh, should be enough. You should be able to – you know what you ought to do? You ought to audit this, uh, this, this recording and all the chats. The chats are saved. And and I would assume that uh, in in a court, they are required to maintain mm -hmm. uh, a record of everything that is is uh, sent in chat. That's yeah, and they don't, even like you say, the sidebars with the judge that are out of the hearing of everybody else. All of that is supposed to be transcribed word for word. Exactly. You make it, and, yeah. and it's supposed to be made available. And uh, uh, so a, a, a yeah. transcript. Of the uh, of the chat in this in this Zoom meeting, yes, uh, you you should have you know including all private chats, uh, one to one uh, chats. Should you, you you need to request that? And it and I don't know. You don't even need a freedom of information request for that, do you, Brent? But no, I should just make a motion and get it. You might have to fight him for it. But one other thing I want to bring up bring up for the for the benefit of all and including this case. And it's all, all anybody can do in a criminal case is say, no, 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 this is not the proper course of process. And this case, for instance, the constitution of the United States guarantees in every criminal case, it shall be a public trial. Mm -hmm. And then the question came up through the decades. Well, what about pre trial proceedings, which is what we just saw. Mm -hmm. That was a pre-trial proceeding. Is that a part of the public trial? And the Supreme Court of the United States and the federal courts and the state courts have consistently, overwhelmingly said yes. So what you're doing when you say I'm making this public, and that little twerp, dirty little twerp that she is, I don't know what to call her, that would say, oh, Miss Judge, I want you to know that he's putting this on Facebook. 
What's she saying? She's saying, I'm a lawyer. I'm here. I took an oath to defend the Constitution. The Constitution says he's entitled to a public trial, and I'm here to stop it if I can, and I'm going to do it any nefarious way I can get away with it. I'm going to find a way to destroy and restrain him from exercising his fundamental constitutional right. That right there is enough to overturn the case on appeal. Why? Because it is wrong to ever, it's against the law in America. Oh, here you are. It is against the law in America to ever penalize anybody in any way for the exercise of a constitutionally protected right, which means a fundamental right. That's what that means. And public trial is a fundamental constitutionally protected right. It's not from the Constitution. It's part of our common law. It's been around for centuries. Yes. Why is that so important? Well, the very reason it's important, because what we're doing right here, we're making public before the people of the United States, the travesty of what went on in state court in Idaho on the date that that hearing was held. Uh, back to you. And thank you, Brent. That's exactly why this trial even began in the first place was exercising constitutionally protected activities, which is why this whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the evil empire wants to stop it all and they've bared their teeth and they're not hiding it anymore. And what can we do in the meantime? We can say no, no, no. Just like we're saying with this presidential election, we hadn't ought to be saying we want Donald Trump as president. We ought to be saying, wait a minute, you didn't follow the proper course of process that our common law demands. Fair, fundamentally fair elections. The Constitution of the United States is a brief of common law government. It says that. We want to follow the process. You did not follow the process. Therefore, the result is unreliable. And that's what happened in this hearing. And it is a persistent, pervasive thing now that judges don't even know what due process is. They go to school, make good grades, and they get appointed a judge. They have a wonderful career. And all they want is a good retirement. That's what's going on here. It's that yeah. stupid, that silly, that ugly. And all we got to do is just quietly say, no, you're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. You've always been wrong. You don't understand the fundamentals of what's going on. But when you're doing it, as we said a while ago, of course, always exercise respect. I can get on here and I can rant and rave, of course. But in those situations where you were, you were restrained, you were calm, you were straightforward, but you were persistent. And I hope you're able to stay that way. Back to you. <laughs> Me too. And I want to thank you both, too, because you were touching on something that I talked to a guy, a really wonderful guy here locally who's been in law enforcement for a long time. And he actually ran for local sheriff here, which I was praying would take place. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get voted in, which who knows what that means, or appointed. Um, and he told me about the spirit of the law. He was the first one to look at this infraction they tried to give me and he's like you know you should explain to them that that's what you were doing we don't have to be lawyers that's why it's set up this way that we are all and and if you know the lord you know that it's written on all of our hearts to know what is right and it's so simple anyways i, I just wanted to share that and thumper if you had more to say i just wanted to share that i do have something else if you're interested that regards this tampering with evidence and why it's so important i cannot believe what happened in ammon's trial Ammon and Aaron's trial, and what I was able to expose, along with other attorneys or prosecutors trying to stop me from broadcasting, the Lord is so good and brought me face to face with one of them, and I got to confront them, um, and also confront the the gentleman who's supposed to be the head of security in the state capitol, somehow overwrote all the security footage of that week. And, set, and lies on the stand, and they want to say it's not important for us to document and that it should be in their hands, they wonder why I'm doing this. Exactly, yeah. No, if you want to go ahead and present that, please uh, uh, be my guest. Now, I did not send these to you. I don't know if it's possible for me to share them. Yes, you can share them right there uh, from your, from okay. your uh, uh, computer there. Okay. So, oh, I see the share screen button. So what I'll do here, the first one... Um, I want to share with you guys just, well, let's start with Blake Higley. He's the executive security officer of the state capitol building who's supposed to be protecting the governor and the speaker of the house. And he's supposed to be in charge of making, I mean, security officer. You would think he would, uh, after being addressed by multiple people, um, 
regarding the concern for the uh, people's safety and multiple women and children were hurt when they brought me out of that room. We had two children, one stroller was almost trampled, another child was pushed over, and one woman was shoved hard into a seat and she was bruised for several days. She's actually interviewed with me and it's gonna be in the documentary. This uh, guy, Blake Higley, had no excuse not to keep this security footage because it was brought to his attention very sufficiently that there was a problem. And somehow he claims that the security footage was overwritten. So what I'm going to do is share with you guys first this video. Let me just get it queued up here so I don't waste your time. So while he was in Ammon's trial, Ammon and Aaron's trial on the stand being cross-examined, they asked did he delete the security footage? And he said no. But it slipped his mind to request the security footage, he says. And due to that, it was overwritten. Now, I don't know about you guys, but any public proceeding or hearing or committee meeting, this, the footage is not overwritten in a week's time. That just doesn't happen. That's not sufficient for public records. That's not sufficient for how, how come you're lying on the stand? Everything is bogged down. Second you know better than that. Okay. I think I got it. I'm learning this technology stuff as we go. Thanks for your patience, everyone. All right. I'm going to share this with you now when I um, confronted Higley. And you'll see the way he responds to me. Why do they use fear tactics? I just want to preface everything with that. Higley! How, how come you're lying on the stand? You know better than that. You know the people were standing passively. When you say you swear to tell the truth, so help you God, that, that's a real thing. You know we didn't break any laws. Are you trying to uh, intimidate these witnesses? Do you feel that this is intimidation? Or do you feel I'm an are investigative you, journalist? Are you? Are, you, are you intimidating me right now because I'm a, okay. because of my journalism? I believe you know the truth, and you should tell the truth, Blake Higley. We didn't break any laws that day, and you know it. Well, all I want to say is that this officer that said it was overwritten, he sounded like a man that's filled with the terminological inexactitudes. <laughs> terminological inexactitudes. In other words, he's a bald-faced liar. Mm -hmm. I know better, you know better. And this is so common now. You'd think people would say, oh, come on, guys. In every case in the country, the criminal case, you've overwritten or overrecorded the key evidence in the case. Yeah. Well, if you've done that then, then that case must be dismissed. Yeah, you don't have you a case. Have your negligence is so strong, yes. we're going to attribute attention to it. You've destroyed the key evidence, therefore, we got to dismiss the case. That's what it ought to be. That's what the law says. Absolutely. That's what the law says. Not, not me talking. The law says that. Go ahead. Right. My, right. my, right. the whole thing should be thrown out because they have, they, they've, 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 uh, they've sullied the case by losing their, their, uh, uh, their evidence. Yes. Yeah. Show me the evidence. So here's what I mean, they get somebody to get up there and lie, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So in combination with this, um, if I may, I've got two more quick little clips that I wanted to show you of the same thing that Whitney Wells tried to do. But this is what they've been doing when I've been covering Casey Baker's case, which is an older gentleman who is defending his life and liberty out in front of the courthouse. If you guys didn't hear, that was March 15th when Ammon and Aaron tried to appear, but they wouldn't allow them because they didn't want to wear masks. They rely on God for their safety. They know that they're defending themselves as innocent men. They shouldn't have to do any type of crazy hoop jumping to defend their liberty. They know this. And so they charged them with a failure to appear and arrested them out front. Due to the violence of these deputy sheriffs, many people got shoved around. I didn't even know the officers were there until I got shoved with my camera 
and look to my left and there's a swarm of cops pushing the people to try to get to Aaron and Ammon and Casey Baker has Parkinson's disease. So he had a hold of the officer's hands to keep his balance and to protect his wife behind him. And they're trying to charge him with uh, two felony batteries on officers, which is an absolute lie. And he has every right to defend his life and liberty, just like we do when they are breaking the law. And so I've been broadcasting his cases. And this is what happens uh, with the other prosecutor who doesn't like that I'm doing that. And I'll show you what he says one of the times during court and then what happens when I uh, expose him. And it's very interesting what he says. Also, what's fascinating is uh, if you guys want to reflect on this, the psychological cues that I as a, a mental health professional can, can, can deduce myself and I'd love to see your guys' opinions. Um, so I'll, if that's okay, I'll jump over to this one here first. Your Honor, I have one issue. It's not related to this case. It's more of in general. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but you're being streamed on YouTube or on, sorry, Facebook Live right now by a gentleman named Brian with no last name on here. I believe that would violate Idaho Court Administrative Rule 45G. So I just want to make the court aware of that. Thank you. I was not aware of that. Thank you very much. Who was it you said is uh, streaming it, please? Um, the person who just labels himself Brian with no last name is Brian Bowermaster, and he's streaming on Facebook Live, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Bowermaster, can you hear me? Pardon me. Can you repeat that? Sure. A production company to me is different than the press, and I was asking if that's not a difference in your mind. Uh, it's, it's not, actually, when it comes to providing information. Uh, when you look at liberty of speech and how that entails in the law, um, there is no limit to liberty of speech when its end is the public's interest and the, and the best interest of the public. And that is why Sorry. I found this work come into my presence as to the violations I saw with our local media, um, misinforming the public, which is why I do feel it is my duty for the people to make sure that this is reported accurately. All right, I understand. So there's a couple of different things going on. Number one, access to the courts is something that's very important to me. I don't intend to unreasonably restrict anyone's ability to observe the proceedings, mm -hmm. but that's quite different from broadcasting it on Facebook Live or any other platform. And so I think you and I might be on the same page in some respect, um, but the state's attorney brings up a really valid point, and that is in order for there to be audio or visual coverage of a court proceeding, you have to get permission in advance from the presiding judge, which in this situation is me. And I don't remember anybody asking me for that permission, and I don't remember me giving it to anybody. So do you feel that you're exempt from Idaho Court Administrative Rule 45G for some reason? I believe that when it comes to uh, the public's interest and when these violations have already infringed upon the public's well-being, um, I think you'll find it very appropriate that the permission being given to a, for a right that we already possess as the people to hold the government accountable uh, that sounds to me like that's an abridging of that right. So that was that that piece right there where I had a chance to address Michael Lojek, Judge Michael Lojek. Um, and what occurs after that, and this is, I, I just wanted to share with you guys, this is what how good the Lord is. When I was outside protesting Ammon and Aaron's trial, I was writing in chalk around each entrance of the courthouse because the Lord told me to do this, to call on the people's conscience in the best way. And all I had to write was two words, God knows. And that's what I wrote around every single entrance. As soon as I got to the top entrance, uh, the, the entrances up on a little, uh, uh, I guess you could say the, the heightened level of the courtyard, they came out and told me I didn't have the right to do that. And they would uh, start lawful action against me if I continued that. And so, I, of course, I insisted that I had the right. And as I'm telling the live audience what happened with that, the next thing you know, that's when the Lord led me to find Mr. Brett Judd. And I could not have planned the timing on this. And I just want to share with you guys what happened with that. And here's that right here. The video that shows this violence on two women's children and also on one of the women that gets pushed over. Now that's a very concerning fact that they are not being honest. Oh, and that's awesome. We have a Mr. Brett Judd here. How are you, sir? 
I'm not allowed to speak with you. You and I have actually got to know each other quite well. Unlawfully uh, accusing me of doing something that I have the right to do under an unlawful administrative rule. Hey, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Hopefully everybody knows that we got some dishonesty in this courthouse. We need to clean it up. Now that is exactly why, guys, that was Brett Judd, by the way. He is the guy that tried to tell, uh, told the judge that it was against the law for me to broadcast the courts, the unlawful court hearing of Casey Baker, uh, who should never have been arrested in the first place. Uh, so they, they injured that man and they're using his time and eating out his substance, making him compelled to come to this courthouse when he did nothing wrong. The officers actually battered him. So anywho, that's that. What do you guys think? Well, I think you did an excellent job. The point you made was, you said to the judge, who was a very kind judge, and he seemed to be measured in his approach, he said, we're on the same page there, Mr. Bryan. We believe the same thing, but there is this administrative rule that the Supreme Court of the state or wherever it was uh, put down to us. And we being officers of the court, we're obliged to find the rule, follow the rules of the court. And you said, yes, but you said, I don't need permission to exercise a right that I already have. And you said later talking to this other guy that was walking out of the courthouse, you said, Uh, well, Brent's trade court rule. He didn't respond to you, which was a smart thing to do on his part at that point. He'd keep his blasted mouth shut. He shouldn't have said anything in court. But again, it comes back to the pimp squeaks. Judge, he's doing something. He's not following the rules. And no thought in that lawyer's mind that he took an oath to support what's constitutional and not to restrict free, free speech, but he thought it was an opportunity to get whatever he wanted by any means. That's why we do not want professional prosecutors in America. We don't want them. It's not part of our common law tradition. It hadn't existed in England. I don't even think they have them now. If they want to prosecute a case, they need to go out and hire an attorney case by case to do that. And professional prosecutors turn into animals. It becomes us versus them. Get rid of them. Oh, Brent, you're against government. No, I'm against false government. False prosecutors, pros professional prosecutors are false government, mm -hmm. part of the evil empire, part of the law of the city, the civil law tradition, and no part of our common law tradition. And then they begin to think it's us against them, like that guy did, and then he attacked you and then arrogantly just wouldn't even respond to you. Of course, I expected that, and like I said, that's a smart thing for him at that point because he's promoting unlawful behavior back to you brian or thumper and i don't know if you noticed his words specifically i can't speak to you is what he said i don't know if he's yeah. being ordered right. by somebody or what no he can talk to whoever he wants he just decided mm -hmm. it's not the right thing to do and he translates it into i can't lawyers do that thinking they can act like some rule they live by they can't do this or they can't do that so they can avoid well they can avoid talking and find cover in a false rule that nobody knows anything about. You see, nobody's going to say, well, I guess he's a lawyer. He understands. Well, he, all he understands is he wants to protect what he wants to do, not his gun over things that aren't true. He has an affirmative duty at this point to dismiss all those charges. Mm -hmm. I'm not that stupid. I heard a little bit of the case. I know that this is the pervasive and persistent operations of government to destroy people whose speech they don't like. So the prosecutor, being a man, has taken an oath to the law and to uphold the law on him, among all, above all people, has a duty to scream and holler and say no, no matter, no matter who he has to scream and holler to and say, this is unlawful. And he hasn't done that. What does he do instead? Well, he does what promotes his little position as a professional prosecutor. All right. And I'll shut up after prosecutor, this. Professional prosecutor, calm Oh, yeah. Thumper, I was going to say, I'll shut up I'm after this and ahead. let you talk. No, uh, no, no <laughs> just, problem. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just I, here. I'm just here to facilitate and maybe throw in something somewhat uh, uh, intelligent every now and then. But, uh, you know, you guys are uh, I, 
<laughs> keep okay. at it. You're doing an awesome job. I don't I know if you're watching last... in the chat, and uh, oh, okay. you're, we're, we're, we're killing it here, you know? Uh, okay. I have one last detail I just wanted to share with you. I don't know this for sure, but this administrative rule adjustment could have been a response uh, to that Mr. Brett Judd scenario because they had addressed me a few times and actually booted me out of a case twice, which was technically a deprivation of my right. But anyways, this little change that Honorable Stephen Judge Hippler made for the courthouse, which I don't know this, but allegedly in response to what has happened, says this. Of course, all the things you would expect about using audio equipment in the courthouse, but then it says, exempt from the prohibitions in this order are cameras and equipment utilized by the Ada County Sheriff for security purposes and on-duty security officers assigned to court security. Further, any law enforcement officer attending court in their official capacity may bring into the courthouse or court annex or remote court site their issued body sworn camera and may record if responding to an incident, so on and so forth. So we're supposed to trust in their hands to get all the video footage or any, or any accurate documentation of what happens when we've already proven that the executive security officer is negligent at our state capitol. And we can't even bring that to their attention and get them to see the validity. Oh, you make an excellent point. We're supposed to trust them. They've proven they're not gonna give us the evidence and record. And so you're saying, I'll record. We don't trust the transcriber the government provides. So you're allowed to bring in all the transcribers you want. One, usually, of your own. Because it's clear, history has shown, that transcribers sometimes omit things, make mistakes, or, or are even the court even orders them, or the clerk maybe, or the U.S. attorney, or the prosecuting attorney, somebody orders them, said, I don't want you to, I want you to take that sentence out that I said, or that thing out that he said out of the transcript. Don't think that kind of stuff doesn't happen. We must depend upon ourselves. God demands it. Don't depend upon the government to do a good job of recording everything. And you make a point again, in this day when courts habitually record the proceedings, what problem is there exactly. for us to record? They've got cameras in every courtroom. Since yeah. this COVID thing came down, I know little rural county courthouses that have spent thousands of dollars installing cameras to make it so that we can have all these Skype hearings and then you're dependent upon the government. It's the same problem we have, just by analogy, think about it. You're out in a rural area and they come by with a rural water district piping and they want you to tie into it. Oh, I won't have to worry about cleaning out my well. I won't have to worry about the electric pump on my well. I'll just type in, I'll have water. Don't think that's the truth. Remember, when you do that and then you forget your well and fill your well, as I know a lot of people have done in the countryside, they may cut your water off and say, do what we say, but we'll not turn the water back on. And I've seen that happen too, already. Yeah. No, every man must do all that he can to make sure he's got food and water and he records the court proceedings for himself. It's up to us, friends, neighbors, and kin. We are the people. We are the militia. That's what people means. It means the, the, the militia of the several states. We are the governors. That means we have duties. What are our duties? Number one, to serve on the jury, to defend the law of the land against enemies domestic. Number two, to be willing to take up arms to defend against enemies foreign. That's our two duties at common law, has been for centuries. Our oath demands it. The oath of those that take office demand it. The oath as jurors demand it. That's the simplicity of it. And what you're trying to do is say, well, we have a public trial here. You've proven you can't record it. You can't be relied on. And that who was that? What was that guy's name? Somebody ought to shame him. The, the thing we can do is to shame these evil headed men and women to do the right thing. And you tried to shame him. He wouldn't respond, which as an evil man doing evil things is the wise thing to do, understanding the system. But believe me, it's us versus them. I didn't say that. They are saying that. Right. And he's going to get you, and he's going to get anybody that stands in his way when he's supposed to be your servant. And one more thing, Brent, just to throw in yeah. there, oh. I love what you're saying, and I just want to, I just want to add a, a little accent to this too. That anybody who's listening, this, 
just like you said, it's we don't want us versus them. The first thing I did during the mediation, which uh, was actually shared on here, thanks to Thumper and, and the whole gang here, I wanted a peaceful option that would show the community the truth about what happened and what we all learned and for all those involved, the best possibility going forward and donate my time to do it. Without, I was going to do community service, whether I was sentenced according to them or not, and they didn't even want to hear it. As a matter of fact, the mediator said, I don't believe the prosecutor is going to go for that. Putting her two cents in probably didn't even bring it up, for all I know. So this is a really sad thing that we can't even say, I want the best for everyone. Can we do this? God has endowed me with these skills. Let me use them to do the right thing. And our own public servants say, nah, we don't, we don't want any part of that. We just want a prosecution. That's oh, that's sad. what they want. When it comes down, it's sad, but it's the way it is. I know when you're younger, and I, I was there when I was younger, and I said, I want to go into court and use this as an opportunity to educate my family or educate my friends, or just they can watch the whole thing, and maybe right will prevail. Well, then you find out that no, it's not only will it not prevail, it's not given a fair shake, it doesn't get an opportunity. They are determined, the system, the system, no, no, the people, not the system, don't talk that way. And the system's not the problem. It's men are the problem. Systems are things. Th things aren't evil. Guns aren't evil. Animals aren't evil. No. Corporations aren't evil. No. Men are evil. And you give them power, and it exacerbates their evil. The man that said mm. power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, that's only a small part of it. And it doesn't really tell the story. What he said was, there is no, is no doctrine so monstrous among men as the doctrine that says that the office sanctifies the man. The office sanctifies the man. He says, that's a monstrous doctrine. Mm. And he went on to say that power he makes the point, although he denies it later, but he says power does not make the evil. Power exacerbates the evil that's already in the man. Yes. And if any man has power, he becomes drunk with it, and there's that taint of depravity in him, and it will exacerbate it to a level that is absolutely murderous if let go. And that's why we have office limits of time in office in America. We ought to have term limits, too. Because why? Because Madison and those other fellows, they were Christian folk that represented, represented, understood that man is inherently tainted with depravity, inherently conceived that way. He's not perfect. That means he has weakness. That means we must guard against it. We must have separation of powers. We must have individual oaths of men to law and not oaths to the government. All of those things. And that, the evil empire and the ideas of it creep in, professional prosecutors, these, these myrmidons. That's what a bodyguard is that's hired by the government. And remember, they're all paid by the government. The paycheck there in Idaho all comes from the same place. Mm -hmm. Can't stop that. So what do we have to deal with that? We have limits. We have the Bill of Rights. We have fundamental rights. We have the right to remain silent, the right to a public trial. Those are all intended to restrain the fundamental evil of those in government. We have juries. Why? To restrain the fundamental evil of those in government. We yes. pit men against one another. That's what it's all about. And to ignore that and is to say, I'm not evil. That's what they're saying. I'm a good guy and really think you are. But when you should be saying, no, the Bible says I'm not a good guy. History makes the point that I've got a weakness too. Therefore, I want things to be done according to oil. I want the fight to be fair so that nobody can say that I just pushed my power and got what I wanted. And that's what they're doing. That's what they continue to do. That's why due process is the number one right under, our, under the protection of our Constitution. It's not under our Constitution. It is the way things are done. As I like to say, Jesus Christ said, didn't say, I'm a list of laws. He said, I am the way, I'm the process, I'm the course. You get on the roadway. And all of our common law is due process. It's nothing else. It is due process. And in this case, what you were doing, of course, is you're saying, wait a minute, you're not following the process. You're not saying, I'm guilty, I'm innocent. You didn't say that. I didn't hear you say that. You said, you're not following the process. That was what you're really saying. And the process is, this has got to be a public trial. You've got to follow the law. That's the process we use in America. 
It's not the will of the state that matters. It's the law that matters. And the law transcends the will of the state, unlike the rest of the world. Well, back to you.